хотите смотреть наши видео на русском, вы можете смотреть их в Яндекс браузере на русском языке, там есть дубляж. So after the molds get filled with cement, they're capped off uh, with a cap. Wow, that I can't actually can't pick it up. Pick it up. That's hot. You know what, Alex? I think I didn't press record. Кадр должен быть на мне. А ты туда вворачиваешь. So we're in uh, Yaroslavl again, uh, and this is a sports equipment factory. Понятно. What are my options here? Uh, this, that's a jam, that's a jam, that's honey, and that's a good jam. This is the good jam, that's regular jam, that's honey. And what's this? That is also more jam. Well, it's not necessarily good, it just has chunks of fruit in it. I don't like it. There's the family, right in the background, just in time. They want to keep playing on the playground, but the, the little girl is scared because you're here. <laughs> just listening to the conversation. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Expat American. I am the Expat American. Alex is back and today we want to ask the question, do Russians make their own products? We're going to be talking about this and Alex is actually going to take us to Yaroslavl and tour a factory, inside a factory, where Russia is making its own goods. And what we want you to ask yourself, as always, is how does this compare to your city, to your country, to where you live? Is there factory production? What is the quality of the products? And what is it in Russia? That's what we'll see in this video. So I noticed a kid's table over there. You want to arm wrestle? I think I want to just wrestle on the table. Just full on wrestling. Oh, it's too cold for that. Okay. In the West, Sportsmaster is a comic book supervillain. But in Moscow, Sportsmaster is a sporting goods store. So we are inside Sportsmaster, the Russian sporting goods store that they have in Moscow, probably other locations. And just like in America, they sell dumbbells for guys to work out. And on the floor over here, you may recognize this. These are kettlebells, and this is the exact brand that I have at my house of kettlebell. I have the orange one though. And Alex is going to take us to the city of Yaroslavl that we've been to before in our Yaroslavl playlist, Kristoff and I, and he's going to show us the inside of this factory right now.
Right now we're in a factory in uh, Yaroslavl, which makes uh, sports equipment, so like weights and things, for example. And this is the beginning of the process. Up there is where the uh, they store the plastic uh, before they pour it into the containers, uh, into the mold to make the main case of the weight. We uh, rose up the floor and uh, right here is where the plastic is stored. You can see that it's in bags and right here it gets poured into a uh, hole right there which goes down to equipment, which I'll show you in a second, that actually makes the molds. And um, so this is where it gets unloaded down there. It gets shipped here, stored, and then unloaded into there and is made into the main plastic shape of the weights. Right here is where they store the packaging boxes. You can see it says, Gantele, right here, one kilogram uh, means weights. And so one kilogram weight has two of them in here. So this is what they will be packaged into later and sent off to the buyers. Dear friends, you know from watching my channel, I'm an older man with young kids who likes to exercise it is important to me that I prioritize extending my life and staying functional so I can be around for my family. Let me introduce you to the only supplement in the world which comprehensively restores health and energy without any side effects. It is Synthesit. The action of Synthesit will make you feel 10 to 15 years younger. Why is it so effective? First of all, it restores blood flow and oxygenates the blood. Take a look. Here is the blood condition before Synthesit. Use and one hour after. As you can see, the difference is amazing. With Synthesit, every cell of your body will get nutrition and oxygen at the cellular level. And it is also proven with additional independent tests. Also, Synthesit restores the number of stem cells. It was scientifically proven in 2019 Stem cells are the basis for life, blood, immunity, and youth. What benefits can you get? It strengthens your immunity, improves well-being, heart, and brain performance, stabilizes blood pressure, and improves life and energy. To get the same results, you will need to take dozens of different supplements, or you can take only three capsules of Synthesit. Find all the links in the description. The product will be delivered right to your doorstep. So up there is where they pour the plastic, which I just showed you a second ago. And right here is where it gets mixed with the paint. It gets heated up to 200 degrees. And then about every 25 seconds or so, uh, we get one of these molds that come out. Uh, and then uh, later is filled with cement. So that's what I'm gonna show you This is where the already shaped and made molds are stored. Of course, they're all different sizes because the weights are going to be different sizes and different weight. Uh, and this is where they're stored until they are ready to be filled with cement, which is what gives them weight. So this company has about uh, 50 employees and they sell to uh, pretty large uh, sports equipment retailers in Russia uh, and they work with them and uh, buy in bulk from this factory. Right here behind me uh, is where the uh, weights, the molds of the weights get uh, cut a little bit. Uh, to make sure they're in their perfect shape uh, so they're cut down of the things they don't need. So right behind me what's going on is the uh, kind of the main most interesting part of the manufacturing process and that is the filling of the molds with cement. 
they used to recently over the past year or so they've uh, changed up their process here in this factory they used to have to have about 15 people work in this area and it was quite dirty and messy and they had to uh, change some things around so now it can be run effectively by just three employees uh, and there's two ways to fill the the molds there's one which is done by hand for smaller weights and another way over there which is done for larger weights so once the molds get filled with cement they get capped off and sent over here into the packaging area where they are put into boxes, they're labeled, they're cleaned, and uh, they get sent off to retailers. Right here, these are the parts that uh, were a little bit defective, so they can't go straight into the filling process. So what's done with them is there's a bathtub right there. It gets filled with hot water, and somebody wearing gloves, an employee will, uh, a worker will take these molds and put them in there and they under the temperature will fit back into their original shape that they're supposed to be and then they can be filled so this is uh, we were just at the right wing of this factory now this is the left wing uh, and they produce a little bit uh, different weights uh, so this actually used to be an old paint factory and this is only the seventh floor of uh, the entire factory. So this is a, a small business that's only renting one floor. Uh, so this is the right wing and here uh, they make these disc shaped weights which you can see here. Uh, this is about one of these bags is about a ton in weight and they have to get it up uh, through the elevator onto the seventh floor and this is what gets shipped to them. Uh, to start their manufacturing process. So these are the discs, they're just raw, uh, and uh, the first process they have to go through is sanding and making them the right shape to get, coat, to get coated in paint and plastic and rubber and whatever they need to, to be able to be sold. So what we just showed over there is the process of the weights getting uh, sanded down and uh, made into the right shape uh, to be to continue down the line of manufacturing. Behind me is where these discs that have already been um, made into their right shape with no dents or anything, uh, they get painted with a coat of um, what is it? Powdered paint. So right here, after they get coated in the paint and put on this rack, they are sent off into the oven, basically, where they get baked, uh, where the paint will stay on them basically forever. And this process, the paint doesn't come off, or it's very difficult to get it off after the baking process. We're on to the next process of the manufacturing. Right here, the weights get heated up in the stove to 170 degrees Celsius, and then they get dipped in rubber uh, because dumbbells have this rubber coating on the bottom. Uh, so they sit in the rubber for a little bit, and then they, get, they go back into the oven to get heated up again, and uh, where they take their final form. So right here they get labeled and packaged. Uh, the labeling is for whatever company wishes to order from this factory. Uh, it's painted on, uh, however they order it, and then it gets packaged, and uh, this is the final product. So this is uh, a different part of the uh, manufacturing process. They, uh, these are smaller weights, so uh, if with the dumbbells you can only do one at a time these you get a rack and uh, you do about 15 of these racks at a time and they're covered in rubber and labeled
right here is uh, where those weights get put on racks and they're dipped in whatever paint they need to be dipped in. Right now we've got orange and red. Of course, it's different for every batch and every manufacturer. Uh, and they're taken out, put onto a cooling rack and get labeled at the very end of the line. So I ordered pimini right here, which is basically pasta filled with meat or cheese. What I've got right here is the infamous Russian borscht, the red soup. I've got sour cream, which is usually what goes in it, and it looks like a roll. So what I liked about that factory is, because I'm a businessman, I'm always looking at things from a businessman's perspective, is it's just a regular warehouse with wooden pillars holding up the ceiling and regular people working in this place making products. Because when I think of a factory that's selling stuff that's in a shiny chain store all over the world, I'm thinking of a big, massive, expensive place. But these are just regular people in a regular place making products that are sold all around Russia, I assume. So it's encouraging because it makes me think, oh, that's something that regular people like myself and like you guys could do as well. What we've ordered here is a uh, samovar. It makes tea. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to be able to go through the entire engineering of this because I honestly don't know how it works. Uh, but it is it is making tea right now somehow. And this has been around in uh, Russia for quite a while. So it's kind of like a cultural thing that's been around for a few hundred years at least. factory that we just toured is um, a small business it started about 10 years ago it started as an idea in a in a room and now it's a full functioning business uh, and their main challenge at this point is uh, competing with uh, Chinese manufacturers uh, in outsourcing because of course for Russian equipment companies it's uh, easier for them uh, to buy from China where they can get the same products for a similar price, sometimes cheaper. And the challenge for this particular company is to compete with those prices, uh, to which is good for them, of course, and it promotes the Russian economy, considering that it would be a Russian sports equipment store buying from Russian manufacturer. Uh, so that is uh, their main challenge right now, is outsourcing. That's cherry. That's raspberry. I don't know what that is, it doesn't taste that good to me. So two questions to think about. How does this Yaroslavl factory compare to factory and industry in your city or country? And how does this lunch cafe compare to lunch cafes in your city? Never mind about this thing uh, making tea on its own. This is hot water and, or actually it might not be, this is water and this is the tea, but it's really strong. Uh, so you have to pour that in your cup and then uh, mix it with some of the water to make it not as strong. Uh, why it's in this sort of thing, I'm not sure. I think it might be warm. Yeah, it seems like it is. So yeah, that's the tea. Very strong. You mix it with warm water. It's because it's romantic, Alex. That's why.
You should know about such things. So, what do you think of Russian factories and Russian industry and production? How does it compare to Russian factories and industry and production in your city? Click like, click subscribe, click the share button and send it to your friends, and click the box to see what happens next.